Let's talk about Guillermo's just amazing imagination and how he crafts these this world that is both frightening and exquisitely beautiful. Well, you know, I think Guillermo finds beauty in places many of us would fear to look. I think he um, I think he has such an extraordinary imagination, such a such a, a precision and such a rigor. He's he's able to contain things in his mind and turn them from and look at them from every angle and then and bring them to life in the most incredible way. Um, it's really unique. It's really I, I I'm a, I'm I'm in awe of his thoroughness. He's incredibly thorough. He doesn't just have an idea and and just throw it out there. He has an idea and he pursues it. And, and he has an answer for everything. Now it's extraordinary. Th this house is alive. Talk, yeah. talk about just this location and um, what it, how it contributes to the story. Well, the house itself was truly breathtaking. The first time I walked on, I was awestruck. Um, and it's never happened. I mean, sometimes you walk onto beautiful sets and you go, oh, this is great. I walked onto this set. I walked through that door into the house. And it looked like that. And um, it was incredible. It was, it was so fully imagined and so completely realized. And Jessica could run down those stairs and, and, and the, the landing could contain the weight of a techno crane. If you step on the floorboards, this crimson ooze would seep out from underneath, like the clay underneath the house. Um, my first day I was with Mia in the bedroom and I was stoking the fire, sort of looking into it with a tortured soul and, and suddenly it, in the house, it felt like the house truly took a breath, an inhale of breath and it was, it was kind of magical. Wow. Love is both transcendent and frightening mm -hmm. in the story. Talk about the love story in this. Uh, yeah, love is... Uh, Love is a force. Love is is a is a force of change, and uh, and it cannot be controlled. Um, and love, if repressed, can twist and it can be deformed and and mis and get misshapen. Um, and um, I think really the film is about a, a kind of a battle for who gets to who gets to love and whose love survives, whose love of the three or four characters is the most sincere. Um, and, and in a way it's also about fear as well and how fear can, fear can obstruct love and fear can poison love. Um, but I hope when people see the film they find out for themselves what love is. What can audiences expect when they sit down in the theater to see this? I, th I, want I think audiences can expect from Crimson Peak a love story and a ghost story, and that the ghosts come from uh, the, the secrets of the past where love has been buried um, and broken. And so the love story and the ghost story are interlinked. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Take care.